<laughs> Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Comedy, makers of Park A. Marge, and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this same time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore, music by Claude Sweeten. the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Meanwhile, I'd like to ask, are you cheese hungry? You sometimes kind of hanker for a dish of macaroni with real full cheese flavor all through it? Well, then get Kraft Dinner, the new Kraft Dinner, better than ever. In seven minutes cooking time, this new Kraft Dinner gives you just about the best macaroni and cheese you ever laid fork to. You see, each package of Kraft Dinner gives you a special macaroni that cooks to fluffy tenderness just in boiling water. And there's also plenty of golden Kraft grated a really magic product. With this Kraft grated, you sprinkle swell cheese flavor through and through that macaroni. With Kraft dinner, you make top-notch macaroni and cheese as fast as you make the dinner coffee. Try it soon. Folks who are really fussy about macaroni and cheese rave about the new Kraft dinner. Ask your food dealer tomorrow for several packages of Kraft dinner. Summerfield and the Great Gildersleeve. Like every other town in the land, Summerfield finds itself on the eve of a national election. Well, so it goes. <laughs> but the hottest discussion in Summerfield seems to be over the campaign for mayor. So let's drop into the office of the newly reappointed water commissioner and listen in. Don't make me laugh, Judge. Don't make me laugh. To Williger may be no rose, but who ever heard of Welch? Welch doesn't stand a chance. There, I must beg leave to differ. Art Welch will be elected mayor of Summerfield on Tuesday next. Art Welch will be the forgotten man on Tuesday next. Welch will be elected mayor. You said that before. I say it again. Look, <laughs> Judge, put up or shut up. I'll make you conservative bet at $1,000 that Welsh doesn't come within a mile of being elected. I'll bet you 5000 that he wins with a plurality of over 800 I'll bet you a million he doesn't. I'll bet you $5 million he doesn't. I'll bet you $10 million he doesn't. Well, now you're just talking like a fool. All right, is it a bet? Yeah, it's a bet. $10 million. $10 million. <laughs> Look, Judge, if you want to bet, let's bet. 50 cents? <laughs> I never bet money on elections. You're afraid. It's against my principles. Judge, if Cyrus P. Terwilliger is not re-elected mayor of this town on Tuesday next, I will personally push a peanut up the middle of Market Street with my nose. My friend, you've got a bet. Uh, make it State Street. Market Street's got cobblestones. <laughs> Miss Marjorie, your uncle's home. Ain't nothing wrong, is it, Miss Gilsey? Wrong? No, why? I just knocked off early because there's nothing being accomplished down in my office. Nothing but a lot of political discussion, and I'm sick of it. Sure is a lot of that. I had it out with the milkman, the ice man, the garbage man, the man that just got lost. Uncle Mark. Well, my dear? You didn't get fired again. Certainly not. Why do you ask? Well, you're home so early. Leroy isn't even home yet. I came home because I thought I'd take the afternoon off if nobody minds. Besides, with this darn election, I can't seem to keep my mind on my work anyway. Uh, what's for dinner, Bertie? Well, dinner ain't for several hours yet. I know. I merely asked. Well, sir, I thought we might have a little lamb this evening. We had a little lamb last night, Bertie. <laughs> yes, sir, but this is a return engagement. Yes, sir. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. No, lamb is good. I merely mentioned it. Hi. Hi, Leroy. Leroy, aren't you home? Oh, what happened? Did you get fired again? Fired? Let me make it clear to everybody once and for all, I did not get fired today or any other time. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The only time I got fired, I resigned. Uh, Mr. Gillsleeve, who you gonna vote for? Bertie, I'm casting my ballot for Cyrus P. Terwilliger. 
After he fired you out of the water department? A good citizen, my dear, puts his choice for public office above personal considerations. Besides, Terwilliger is also the man who gave me my job back. Let's not be forgetting that. Yeah, Unc is right. You've got to figure all the angles. He's working for Terwilliger now, so he's got to vote the way he's told. That has nothing whatever to do with it. Are you kidding? Yeah. I am beholden to no man, Leroy. I arrived at this decision as the result of mature consideration and unbiased judgment. Well, I did. How is Judge Hooker voting? The judge is a big sorehead. He votes like a sorehead. Forgive and forget, that's my motto. Oh, Mr. Gillsleeve, you hadn't ought to vote for that man. Bertie's right. I'm surprised at you, Uncle Moore. Who are you to be surprised at me, young lady? I'll ask you to remember I'm your uncle. If anybody's going to be surprised around here, I'll be surprised. Well, I don't care. Francie's father says Mayor Terwilliger is no good. That's right, he's no good. And if you don't believe it, ask the ice man. <laughs> <laughs> Francie's father says Mayor Terwilliger is a disgrace to Summerfield. I don't care what Francie's father says. He says he wouldn't vote for Terwilliger if he was the last man on earth. Well, I wouldn't vote for Francie's father, so there. Ye gods, can't a man have any peace around here? I come home early from the office because I can't stand all the politics, and what do I get? By George, I'm going out. Bertie, what time is dinner? Well, I thought if you didn't mind, Mr. Gillsleeve, I got a meeting in my club tonight. And, oh? Uh, we were going to sort of run over the candidates and the issues, oh, so... Oh, my goodness. I thought if you didn't mind, we'd have dinner a little early, around 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Don't mind me. Maybe I'll be back and maybe I won't. <laughs> Hi, Commissioner. Huh? Oh, hello, Floyd. Where are you tearing off to? Nowhere, Floyd. Just trying to get a little peace and quiet. Well, come on in here. I'll give you a hot towel. Well, hot towel sounds good. You'll promise not to sell me any politics along with it. Uh, don't worry. Here, let me have your coat. Okay. There. Climb right up in the chair and lay down, Commissioner. Thank you. <sighs> this wouldn't be a bad place to spend the day. Well, suit yourself. We can start at the top of the price list and give you the works. Just a hot towel, Floyd. But keep it nonpartisan. That's me. I'm going to vote for Artie Welch, but I'll be quiet about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, the moonlight's fair tonight along the Wabash. Uh, Confound it, Floyd. Why Artie Welch? Thought you wanted to stay off that subject. Well, I do. But when I see a man planning to vote wrong, uh, Artie a customer of yours? Nope. Gets his hair cut over on State Street. Well, then I should think you'd vote for Terwilliger. Why don't you? Terwilliger don't tip. Terwilliger. Floyd, that's no way to analyze public issues. Issues? That's something else again. When it comes to foreign policy, I'm a regular H.V. Cottonborn. Yeah, well, I'll get that on the radio. I don't see how you figure that a man like Welch is qualified to be mayor of this town. Terwilliger is a real administrator. Mr. Gildersleeve, if I was Terwilliger's water commissioner, I'd say the same. That has nothing to do with it. Welch just doesn't measure up, that's all. How do you decide on a candidate anyway, Floyd? Just flip a coin? Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm a pretty conscientious citizen. I got my own system of picking candidates, and it's a pretty good one. Yeah, what is it? Well, it involves the wife, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, that's nothing to be ashamed of. That's fine. Good idea for a man and his wife to talk these things over. I guess you never met Mrs. Munson, did you? Uh, well, no, I never did. Why? Well, I don't like to knock her. She's okay, as women go. I never had any regrets, particularly... <laughs> Of course, once in a while, she might pass a remark that's a little uncalled for, but then I'm no angel. She knows that, too. What's all this got to do with voting? Oh, I'm coming to that. Like I say, the babe is okay most ways, keeps the house clean, she don't throw money around, and she's a fair cook, if you like everything fried. <laughs> but on politics, brother, they never should have given her the ballot... And why do you consult with her about your vote? I don't. I just ask her how she's going to vote, and I vote the opposite. <laughs> Lloyd, you're a political ignoramus. I ain't dumb enough to vote for Terwilliga. Oh, let me out of here. I thought you wanted a hot Let job. me out of here. Ye gods, can't I go any place without having politics shoved down my throat? man. Yeah, try to be. Let me sit here. Let me sit here and get a little peace and quiet, will you? Certainly. Uh, trouble at home, Mr. Gildersleeve? 
Well, not exactly, Peavy. I was driven out of my house by a political argument, if you must know. I'm looking for a place where people don't argue with me about who's going to beat whose brains out tomorrow. Well, you're very welcome here. <laughs> Thank goodness for one man that doesn't give a hoot about politics. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I've got my opinions, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, well, just keep your opinions to yourself. Oh, I do. I believe in the secret ballot. Well, it's a great institution, the secret ballot, Peavy. Keystone of democracy. Uh, you voting for Twilliger, Peavy? Twilliger's an excellent man. You wouldn't vote for Welch, though, would you? He's an excellent man. Twilliger is a fine administrator, though, Peavy. I like the fellows back of him, too. But who's back of Welch? Well, I hear he has some very fine people supporting him. Confound it, Peavy. To hear you talk, I'm beginning to think you're for Welch. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you're for Twilliger. Well, no, I wouldn't say that either. There's only two people running for mayor, Peavy. Who are you for? I'm for the secret ballot. Yes, sir. <laughs> How can we discuss this sensibly if you won't tell me who you're for? Well, no, I prefer to listen to arguments for both candidates, Mr. Gildersleeve. So does Mrs. Peavy. Well, there aren't any arguments for Welch, Peavy. People who vote for Welch, Welch are simply voting from blind prejudice. Terwilliger is a fine man. He has a fine record. He's been a public servant for 20 years. I'm very happy to endorse him, personally. Well, coming from a water commissioner, that's no argument either. I resent that. <laughs> Terwilliger has at no time attempted to influence my vote. What honesty. Why, that's an argument in itself. You think so? Well, here's Judge Hooker. Uh, political spy. <laughs> what are you doing in here, you old goat? <laughs> what are you doing? Trying to get Peavy to vote for your friend Terwilliger? We were discussing the situation, pro and con. Well, Peavy, I'll give you the lowdown. Mr. Gildersleeve made a bet with me. If Terwilliger loses, Gildy's got to push a peanut up State Street with his nose. Well, now, that's something I'd like to see. Maybe I'll vote for Mr. Welch. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Hooker, you're an unscrupulous campaigner. <laughs> Don't forget, Gildy, all's fair in love and politics. Yeah. <laughs> Let me in, Eve. Let me in. They're after me. Who? Oh, I don't see any... There. Well, who's after you? <laughs> Nobody. Joke. Oh, Throckmorton, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing, Eve? Oh, nothing, really. I just got home, and I built a fire, and I was going to make some tea, and just relax. Will you come in? Well, if you insist. Ah. Uh, a crackling fire. Mm-hmm. Do you want to sit there? I know. Uh, let's pull the sofa over, huh? Let's pull it up in front of the fire so we can... That's uh, not a sofa, Throckmorton. <laughs> it's a love seat. Who am I to argue? <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, I'll do that, Eve. Let me. Oh, you can't handle it all alone. No, you watch me. Nothing but a little... Uh, nothing but a little... Love seat. Uh. You're wonderful. Now, you sit down and enjoy the fire while I go and... Eve... I'll be right back. I'm just going to make the tea. Oh, forget the tea. Well, if you don't want it. That's the girl. Sit down. <sighs> hmm. <laughs> nice here, isn't it? Nice. Now, Throckmorton. <laughs> I seem to have to keep reminding you we're not engaged anymore. Well, no harm in holding a girl's hand, is there? Just a friendly gesture. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't it? Not a thing. Very well, then. We agreed, you remember, that all that was over and done with. Over and done with. Seriously, Eve, you don't know what it means to me to be able to come here this afternoon and spend a few quiet moments with you, far from the madding crowd, far from strife and strain. A man needs that. I know. A man needs a place he can come to, a refuge. So nice and quiet here, so warm, so friendly, and you're so understanding. Now, throw All right, we'll just hold hands. 
Maybe later, though, huh? Little kiss, if I'm good. We'll see. You know what I like to do? I like to sit here in the afternoon with the radio on and listen to good music. Only there's so little good music on the radio these days. Nothing but politics. That's all you hear anyplace. By the way, Throckmorton, I haven't asked you, how are you voting? <laughs> now, Eve, I didn't come here to talk politics. But how are you voting? I'd like to know. Well, I'm voting for Terwilliger for mayor, Apted for Congress, Terwill Lynch... Terwilliger, you're voting for Terwilliger. Well, I... Let go of my hand, Throckmorton. Oh, but Eve... Let go. Gosh, if it means so much to Eve, I'll vote for Welsh. Only don't spoil everything. I will not hold hands with a man whose political principles mean no more to him than that. Let go. Oh, nuts. There goes the whole darn afternoon. Ye gods, I wish this election were over. <laughs> Fred Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. And uh, speaking of seconds, everybody at your dinner table will pass their plates for seconds when you serve the new Kraft Dinner. I mean the new Kraft Dinner. Delicious macaroni and cheese. Fluffy light with real satisfying cheese flavor through and through it. It's a delight to folks who hanker for cheese these days. And of course, with Kraft Dinner, you make this marvelous macaroni and cheese in just seven minutes cooking time. You see, each package of Kraft Dinner gives you the special macaroni that gets tender and light just in boiling water. Never any heavy, starchy taste with Kraft Dinner macaroni. The box also gives you a big, generous packet of golden Kraft grated. It puts really swell cheese flavor through and through that macaroni in a jiffy. So try the new Kraft Dinner tomorrow. You'd better get several packages so you'll have some on the pantry shelf, ready to cook really marvelous macaroni and cheese in just seven minutes. <laughs> Now let's return to Summerfield and the Great Gildersleeve. Comes the dawn of Tuesday, November 7th, and what a day for an election. Since early morning, the rain has come down in torrents. Gildersleeve has spent a good part of the day standing at the front window waiting for the rain to let up and trying to summon up enough enterprise to go out in it. Now, in desperation, he goes to the phone and calls up Judge Hooker. Hello, Judge. Yeah, fine day for ducks. Look, Judge, I've been thinking. As long as the weather is so bad and you and I are going to vote on opposite sides anyway... Why don't we make a deal? If you don't go to the polls, I won't go to the polls. In that way, we'll just cancel each other out. Yeah, how about it? Great. No use getting wet for nothing. Okay, Judge. Consider your vote canceled. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. If I don't watch out, I'm going to be a genius. Why didn't I think of that before? Now I can go take a nap with a clear conscience. You mean you're not going to vote? You're not going to vote at all? Well, I don't need to, my dear. Yeah, it may be better than voting for Terwilliger at that. <laughs> The judge and I see just opposite on everything. So by staying away from the polls, we merely cancel out each other's vote. What if everybody in the country were as lazy as that? Laziness has nothing to do with it. Plain common sense. You see what the weather's like. Man could catch cold out there. <coughs> it's our duty in these times to... <laughs> our duty in these times to guard our health. Besides, I'm down to my last A ticket. Uh, excuse me if I go out the front way, Mr. Gillsleeve. There's a lake around the back stoop. Oh, where are you going, Bertie? Going out to vote. I told you, Bertie, if you wait a little while, it'll clear up. I've waited all I can wait. I'm going to get down there before it runs out of ballots. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that, Bertie. They got ballots enough for everybody. I don't care. If I was to wait, maybe I'd get took with appendicitis or something so I couldn't vote. But if you go out, you'll get wet. Oh, a little water never hurt nobody. Got my umbrella and got my galoshes and I got my sample ballot. Well, gosh, Bertie, I'd be glad to drive you down there, but... I'm down to my last gas ticket. What's in the tank has got to last me till the new ones come due. Oh, that'll be all right, Mr. Gilsey, if I don't mind. I'll tell you what, Bertie. Why don't you and Lily B do what Judge Hooker and I are doing? Just cancel out each other's vote. No, Mr. Gilsey, you can't talk me out of it. My mind's made up. I got my candidates and got my issues straight for once, and I'm ready. I got to vote while the spirit's on me. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm exercising my franchise. Hallelujah! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she's a fine woman. Fine woman. Well, what are you children staring at? I'd have driven her down there, only I haven't got any gas. None to speak of. Don't you see, if the judge doesn't vote and I don't vote, it comes out even, just the same, doesn't it? Marge, we go upstairs and write a letter or something, will you? You make me nervous. I'm going, don't worry. Only wish I were 21, that's all. 
<laughs> well, Leroy? I didn't say anything. I know, it's not like you. Go play in the cellar or something, will you? I'd like to be alone. Can I use your saw? Anything, only don't stand around there watching me. Okay, I got an idea for a super machine gun. Don't saw any nails. Uh, uh, what a day. Rain, rain, rain. If it had been a decent day, it would have been different. Be glad to vote. A day like this, a man could catch cold. <laughs> Little Leroy. <laughs> Leroy! <laughs> That's the last time he uses my saw. Uh, front door. Well, uh, wonder who that is. Excuse me, you have the door? Oh, yes, come in, quickly. Yeah, I just wiped the seat. Uh, hurry up, it's wet. Oh, <laughs> those are my pants? All cleaned and pressed. I cover with newspaper so it doesn't get wet. Oh, well, fine. <laughs> Thank you. How much is that? It's 75 cents. Uh, see if I got it here. Quite a day, isn't it? Oh, it's a fine day. Huh? Well, a little rain, but who cares? You know something? Today I'm an American. To, oh, you mean you're a citizen? Oh, I got my citizen papers eight months ago. But today, for the first time, I vote. Oh. That's a great thing, you know, to vote. Yeah, I guess it is. Sure. In the country I come from, nobody votes. There, a man doesn't even open his mouth. And why? He's afraid. Here, nobody is afraid. He votes, so I vote. Well, that's fine. Sure, six o'clock this morning I vote. Maybe it rains a little. What do I care? They open the polls, I'm the first man in. The first man in Summerfield to vote. That's me, Morgan. Uh, what would you say your name was? Well, uh, my real name, it's a little difficult. Uh, Megunin. Who can say that? So I choose a nice American name, Morgan. What was wrong with Rockefeller? Uh, Rockefeller... <laughs> Uh, that's a little hard for some people to say, too. What's the difference? My friends call me Leo, so that's how I vote. Leo Morgan. You know, I'm so excited. I walk in there and I say, good morning. I've come to vote. So they say, just a minute, what is your name? Like I was a foreigner or something. So I say, Leo Morgan, I'm a citizen. So then they look in a big book and I'm getting worried. Maybe they forgot me. Maybe I didn't do something I should. Oh, I'm so worried. And then, what do you think? I'm in the book. Great. Yeah, me, Morgan. <laughs> me, Morgan, I'm in the book. So I sign my name. I did I did I? And the gentleman, he gives me a big ballot all my own, and he takes me to a little, uh, like a little room. Uh, a booth. Uh, that's right, a booth. All by myself. Nobody else. It's fine. The gentleman <coughs> says to me, take your time. I say, thank you very much. And he pulls the curtain so I won't be bothered. Such privacy. I'm not used to it. At home, we used to sleep far in a room. So, uh, I, I'm all alone in there. I did, I did, I. <laughs> I take my time and I look over my ballot and I vote. Maybe I didn't vote right, but I voted. And whoever gets elected, that's my president. Well, Morgan, by George, you're all right. Sure, I'm all right. And I'll tell you another thing. This country is all right. Hey, Unc. Oh, oh, Leroy. Uh, come here, my boy. You know Mr. Uh, Morgan here? Oh, hi. <laughs> Your boy? Uh, he's my nephew. Fine boy. He'll be voting too one of these days, huh? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Yeah, I got a son, uh, Gregor, a little younger. He goes to school. Gregory? I know him. He's in the 4A, a little punk. Yeah, a little punk. Yeah, I know him. <laughs> That's my Gregory. Well, I, I should be leaving. I talk too much. Oh, not at all. Uh... As a matter of fact, I'm very glad you dropped in, Mr. Oh, are you get so excited, I forget the pants. Here. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. What's the matter, Unc? Uh, nothing, Leroy. I wonder if you'd be good enough to run upstairs to my room and get my car keys. Sure. You going someplace, Unc? Yes, Leroy. I'm going to vote. Yikes! Can I go with you? I don't see why not. Hooray! about Judge Hooker? Uh, Hooker? What about him? Well, you, you made a deal, didn't you? Are you going to tell the judge you're voting? There's an old saying, Leroy, invented by Judge Hooker, quote, all's fair in love and politics, unquote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a character. <laughs> hey, Floyd, close up the 
the barber shop and get in the car. I'll take you to the polls. I'm still voting for Artie Welch, you know. I don't care if you're voting for McKinley. Come on and vote. <laughs> Come on, fold up your umbrella, PB, and get in. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. By the way, I'm voting. For... I don't care, PB. This is a nonpartisan patriotic bus service. Here we go. Put on your old gray bonnet with the blue ribbon on it, and we hit shore drop into the shade. Well. Here's my ballot, Mrs. Farquhar. Do, uh, do I have to fold it? Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve, right up to the dotted line. Oh, yes. Well, thank you. Well, I feel like a citizen. Uh, you know, Mrs. F., I pulled a fast one on Judge Hooker. He and I were going to vote opposite ways, so I made a deal with him that neither of us would vote. Oh, you shouldn't do that. No good citizen would. Yeah, I know that, Mrs. Farquhar, but all's fair in love and politics. Besides, if I'm patriotic... And the judge isn't. Well, that's just too bad. Don't worry about the judge's patriotism. He voted at 9 o'clock this morning. Oh! <laughs> Why, that double-crosser. He isn't patriotic. He's just a crook. Ladies and gentlemen, the returns aren't in yet. I may have to push a peanut up State Street with my nose. <laughs> but at least I voted. You know, there are people in this world who haven't the chance to vote. They know that privilege, and they know what it's worth. Here in this country, we're inclined to take it for granted. But now that the Japs and the Germans are trying to take that right away from us, look at how this country is willing to fight for it. Well, if it's worth fighting for, it's worth going to the polls for. Get out and vote on Tuesday, and don't let anything stop you. Good night. The music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's special news about a wonderfully nourishing cheese food the whole family loves. A cheese food you can serve in a hundred or more tempting ways. It's Pabstet. Yes, Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food. Look for it in the familiar round flat package. Pabstet spreads like butter at room temperature, slices neatly when chilled, melts with luscious smoothness into an appetizing sauce you pour over macaroni, hot vegetables, chicken, and fish. Pabstet spreads and toasts to perfection, makes grand sandwiches and snacks. And it's also swell for dessert. Try Pabstet's melted on apple pie. It's delicious. To all those mealtime, lunchtime treats, Pabstet adds its nourishing goodness of food energy, milk protein, milk minerals, vitamin A and vitamin G, also called riboflavin. Tomorrow, buy Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food. Don't forget, you ask for Pabstet. <laughs> this is the National Broadcasting Company.